You're back in business with me, Harsha Subramaniam. The third quarter current account deficit number was announced last week at a record high level of 6.8% of the GDP, $32.6 billion versus $22.3 billion last quarter. We're joined by Indranil Pan, Chief Economist at Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, Indranil, many thanks for joining in. What did you make of this number? I ask in the context of many people expressing their reservations of saying how this high CAD is really not sustainable. Is this the worst that you're going to see or is it going to get even worse? Uh, possibly this is the worst because what we are expecting is there is some amount of pickup that is happening on the export side. We are expecting a bit of a softening that could happen in terms of both the, uh, the, the oil prices globally and domestic gold imports because of all the uh, measures that the government has come out with. That could actually soften a little bit. But overall, I don't think we are going to get into the sustainable mode of a 2.5% yet. Mm. Uh, for the year, in the fourth quarter, we are definitely seeing a lower number on the CAD. So the overall for the year, we are looking at still a 5% as a proportion of GDP. Sure. For FY14, we are down to about 4% as a proportion of GDP only. Mm. But that is also because of we are factoring at about $105 a barrel as an average price of oil compared to the 110 that we saw in the last fiscal. Sure. Beyond that, I think structurally there are a lot of issues within the CAD that needs to be really addressed in terms of even, say, the services uh, income, uh, the uh, net interest outgo, which is really burgeoned to a, 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 a almost a 20 billion gap uh, uh, for the last fiscal. Sure. The government has clearly been making certain measures to make gold imports unattractive, uh, perhaps some more maybe in the offing. Do you believe some of these measures will actually help in protecting the current account or, or is it just too meager? Uh, to a certain extent, yes, but as you rightly put out, it would be possibly meager, maybe a 3 to $4 billion of drop in the overall gold import in terms of value terms uh, from previous year to FY14. Sure. But as I said, the structural issues in terms of the very high the net interest outgo, the plateauing out of the transfers, especially the private transfers, software business is also not doing well in mm -hmm. terms of the growth rate year on year. Mm -hmm. All these would actually uh, keep us uh, sweating on the current account for uh, for significant amount of time. The other important issue is, and that's something the finance minister said as well, is to make our exports more competitive. Perhaps you are going to see some measures or SOPs for exporters. Uh, do you think that will be enough to bridge the gap? Very difficult because I think Clearly, in terms of our models, we have seen exports more as a function of overall global demand mm. uh, rather than the currency or the cost at which the exports is done. Mm. Uh, and, and given the fact that even the huge depreciation of the currency did not help your exports, unless the global growth becomes that much stronger, it's very difficult to see exports reviving. Where do you see in the real then uh, the rupee settling? With an extremely volatile environment like this, when trade deficit is skewed, uh, how do you see the rupee behaving in the near term? Yeah. Thankfully, I think in the previous fiscal, starting from around September with the turnaround in the investor sentiments, because of Chidambaram's uh, 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 various steps that he had taken, mm. we had seen a significant amount of FIA inflows having happened. Sure. Now, going ahead, I think the clear uh, sort of uh, 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 direction for the rupee would depend on the extent of the capital account uh, that the country brings in. And there, I think I'm slightly uh, sort of uh, not very confident in terms of the capital flows because we are getting into the election phase. We would possibly be seeing a policy uh, uh, seizure at this point in time. And to that extent, the whole noise that has been made by the, uh, the rating agencies would possibly come back. Mm. So in this whole atmosphere, in the second half of the financial year, I would possibly see a rupee more towards the 56 and the 57 mm. uh, compared to the current 54 to 54, 50 range. Very quickly, so I understand, do you expect this capital flows to continue or do you think that's, that's it's going to be more volatile? For the moment, it is still continuing. We expect it to continue. But in the second half, I think I'm also looking at some amount of global risk coming out of Europe mm -hmm. because we have the German elections and we really don't know what is the type of dynamics that it throws up. Sure. So overall, the atmosphere in terms of flows in would, from the global perspective, also would possibly be uh, weaker for the emerging markets. So that is the reason I would be looking at more depreciation in the second half with the weaker capital flows in the second half. Indranil Pan, we'll leave it there. Many thanks for joining thank us you very much. on Bloomberg. That was Indranil Pan from Kodak Mahindra Bank. Out of time on this show. Thank you so much for joining us in business. Please continue watching our coverage of the Supreme Court verdict on Novartis.